verifying that my screen is visible. Yeah. So in last session, in last session, we discussed about for loops and while loops. We discussed about for loop and while loop. So how for loop will work and how why how the while loop will work. You know, this we have discussed. <clears throat> right. In today's session, in today's session, we will introduce you to the okay object oriented programming principles. We will introduce to oops principles okay object oriented programming structure principles or system principles so basically when it comes to object oriented programming principles you know what is an object right you know what is an object right so these object mainly will have okay any object that you take that will have okay a variety of principles Okay, too many principles are there, not just one principle it has. So if you take any object, if you take any object in the world, ideally it has to support four principles by default. There are four principles that it should or it must support, okay, at any case. <clears throat> okay, what are those four principles is, okay, you have <clears throat> encapsulation, this is one of the first principle and then abstraction then abstraction then you have inheritance you have inheritance and finally polymorphism okay there are others also like cohesion uh, you know there are other principles also but any object okay in object oriented programming okay any object that you take that objects must have to support these four principles these four principles it must need to support for these four principles <clears throat> so so encapsulation abstraction inheritance and polymorphism these are the four principles of your object oriented programming principles okay so we'll take each one of them we'll take you will take each one of them and we'll write and we'll try to explain that in detail okay <clears throat> so the first thing is encapsulation first thing is encapsulation okay what is encapsulation? Okay, what is encapsulation? Okay, what is encapsulation? So when you ask what is an encapsulation? So this is simple to say, this is simple to say, combining, <clears throat> combining, it's a process, okay? Encapsulation is a process. It's a process of combining it's a process of combining all the properties, all the properties and behavior and behaviors as a single unit, as a single unit. Okay. So encapsulation is basically a, a process of combining it's a process of combining all the properties and all the behaviors of an object as a single unit, as a single unit. For example, I can take one example for this, okay? You take, for example, mobile phone. You take your mobile phone, okay? Your mobile phone, right? When you take your mobile phone as, as an example, okay, you look at the components, right? You have a motherboard. Right, you have a motherboard, 
you will have a LCD screen or LED screen, which is a different component. There is a battery, right? There is a speaker, then there is a mic, and there is a RAM, right? There is a RAM, and there is a CPU, and Thank you. <clears throat> so basically we are discussing about encapsulation. Encapsulation is a process of combining all the properties and behaviors of an object as a single unit. For example, if I take a, mother, a mobile phone as an example, motherboard, LCD screen, or your, or your LED screen, battery, right? Your speakers, all these are individual items. All these are individual items, right? So now the, pro, the process of combining, right? The process of assembling, okay? The assembling process as a single unit is called as encapsulation. It's called as encapsulate, encapsulation, okay? So every object that you take, it is in encapsulated mode. For example, you take a pen, you take a pen. There are individual components, like you have a cap, right? You have a refill, there is a, there is a uh, nib, ink, right? Everything is an individual component. We combine them to, to create a pen. So the process of combining all these properties as a single unit, all this, all the properties and behaviors as a single unit is called encapsulation okay so the best example for encapsulation in java is class classes <clears throat> classes are the best example for encapsulation because class is the class is the location name, phone number, email, all these are the properties, all these are the properties and behaviors like, okay, sleep, walk, okay, run, okay, run, all these are, all these are the behaviors. So now classes are the best example. How do you encapsulate your code inside? classes so classes are the one which is combining the objects properties and which is combining the object properties and object behavior as a single unit as a single unit right so <clears throat> classes are the best example for encapsulating or enca best example for the encapsulation in java so everything you write inside the classes without classes you cannot define so classes are the Classes are the logical representation of classes. Classes are the logical representation of of an object, right? Classes are the classes are the logical representation of your objects. Okay, simple to say, you are representing your your details in the form, in the form format. So that form is like which is collecting your properties, which is collecting your properties and behavior as a single unit, okay? It can be a registration form. It can be a registration form, okay? Which collects all your details as a single unit, as a single unit. So when you take a registration form as an example, so it is the same form given to multiple students, right? It is the same form given to multiple students, but collects the, collects the information collects the information from multiple students, from multiple students, right? For example, you go to your Gmail, 
or if you know the Facebook, you go to the Facebook, right? Facebook sign up if you have seen or Gmail sign up you have seen. It's the same page that comes for multiple people. That comes for multiple people where it collects all the details for one single person. Okay, it collects the details and it will save as a one single unit, as a single unit, right? So the same page that comes for you and the same page that comes for me also, right? So when I go for a sign up, so what it asks, it asks my first name, last name, all the properties, all the properties. So encapsulation is a process of combining all these properties and the behaviors as a single unit. Who collects these details inside? A class will collect the detail. A class will collect the detail and it will store it somewhere. It will store it somewhere as a single unit, as a single unit. So that is encapsulation. That is encapsulation. Any questions on encapsulation? Any questions on encapsulation part? Any questions on encapsulation? Any queries or any questions on encapsulation? So encapsulation basically talks about the process. It talks about the process. If there are no questions, then we'll go for the next topic, abstraction. Ex abstraction. What is an abstraction? What is an abstraction? So the world itself is an abstract. The world itself is an abstract. So the meaning of abstract here is, the meaning of abstract here is expose necessary information. Expose necessary information and hide unnecessary information. Hide unnecessary information in background. is called an abstraction. Abstraction is simple to say, expose what is necessary for, for your application and hide unnecessary information in the background. Okay, this process is called abstraction. This process is called abstraction. So a simple example for this. Okay, a simple example for this. Now, think that, think that I'll take the same mobile phone. Okay, the mobile phone as an example think that now mobile phone <clears throat> okay the parts has come to the come to the assembly assembly center and each part they have assembled they have encapsulated as a single unit called mobile phone so the different different parts has arrived at your okay assembly center and they gave it as a mobile phone they have tested and they have given it as a single unit called mobile phone now in mobile phone when it comes to the market, think that this mobile phone is purchased by your parent. Parents or your grandparent. Think that. This is now your grandparent is using this phone. Parent or your parent or grandparent is using the phone. Think that. Okay. So now you go and explain them how the mobile phone works. How the mobile phone works. Let's say your grandparent has asked you, okay, okay. Your grandparent has asked you how to how to call, how to make a call, how to make a call to a number. Think that this is the question or this is the requirement of your grandparent. Okay, then normally what we say, 
normally what we say simple okay hey, grandpa you have to go you have to just click on this symbol okay you have to click on this phone symbol then you have to enter the number you have to enter the number and then press this green color right green color symbol what is displayed on the screen press the green color symbol what is displayed on the screen that's it if you wanted to make a call right if you wanted to make a call this is what you have to explain that okay so or else okay there is a symbol called contacts okay search for a name search for a name and then dial it dial it that is what that is what he needs instead of that you explain him in this way okay you explain him in this way now think that okay so first you have to <clears throat> click on the symbol click on the symbol you say him this then then <clears throat> there is a sensor on your there is a sensor on the screen which will send to which will send a signal to your motherboard signal to motherboard okay motherboard to cpu cpu understands it's the number cpu understands all the numbers all the numbers and then it will display onto the it is display on output screen okay then when you click on this symbol click on dial symbol the call will go to nearest your uh, what is that base station okay it will go to your nearest base station from there a cell will be assigned and from there it goes to your home register location hsr location then it goes to your okay then it goes to your central registry and if it then the other side there is a one more tower okay it, it will go to nearest pts then the cell will be assigned then the cell will be assigned here and from here okay on radio signal there is a receiver on your on on the other phone there is a re receiver on the other phone the call gets connected and the billing starts if you say this process to him immediately he'll throw the phone and he'll say i don't want this i don't want this right what he says what he need he just wanted to enter a number and dial it that's all okay but in the background all this will happen think that all this will happen in the background so any product that you are developing or any application that you are developing okay you have to expose what is necessary information and you have to hide the unnecessary information in the background for example you move you go to an atm okay what you need you go to the atm insert the card then enter the pin okay enter the number okay then wait for the, the atm to give you the money right take collect the money take the card and come out you see what is happening in the background nowhere it is exposed nowhere it is exposed right so this is this process is called abstraction okay abstract the unnecessary unnecessary actions in the background and only expose the necessary information in the necessary information for the people in the foreground right take any example okay take any example riding a bike or driving a car what happens in the background nobody needs there is an escalator there is a brake there is a there is a gearbox and there is a driving wheel right so if you go on first gear then you have to you have to go on this speed second you have to switch to this third you have to th fourth and based on the speeds how the engine runs how the engine burns how the carbon dioxide get, gets generated we don't need all this okay right hide unnecessary information in the background and only expose the information what is required what is required for example you go for a login screen and you give your username and password and click on enter click on enter that's it what is happening in the background that shouldn't be exposed that never should that is that is 
that shouldn't be ever exposed right so any object that you're taking okay it should be in, in abstract mode which means it has to expose only what is required what is required for the outside world and what is unnecessary for the outside world has, has to be hidden in the background has to be hidden in the background so that is like anything anything okay the process of hiding unnecessary information in the background and only exposing the required information to the foreground is called as abstraction it is called an abstraction okay so what is being achieved with the help of abstraction okay what is being achieved with the help of as abstraction is privacy okay this is where because of the abstraction layer because of the abstraction layer okay java has become secure java has become secure so in the abstraction basically okay you can achieve the security part so what is happening in the background i'm i'm hiding it in the background okay only what you need i'm just telling you that that's it right so using abstraction will achieve the privacy in your applications expose only the required information for the users and hide all unnecessary process in the background hide all the unnecessary process in the background so which is called an abstraction process So any questions on abstraction, on encapsulation and abstraction? These are very important, the features of, the features of object oriented principles.